Okay, so uh, we were on um, oblique shocks. Okay, so um, uh, as when we wrote down the equations for oblique shocks, we saw that uh, basically they're all same as the normal shocks, uh, except that the um, parallel component of the velocities they do, do not change across the uh, oblique shock. So uh, just to get a reminder, as in the normal shocks, we wrote out all the uh, changes in properties in terms of the impinging Mach number. So, we had an expression like this, right. So, this is the uh, Mach number uh, behind the shock. So, this we wrote down as Right. So, this is just to kind of uh, remind ourselves. Then similarly, we wrote the say this for okay. Then again, this was for uh, density, and then this is for the pressure. Okay, and um, Right. So, these are expressions that we had for a normal shock. Okay. So, these are all expressions for a normal shock. Now, like we found out in uh, that for oblique shocks, now the uh, component parallel to the oblique shock does not change. Component of the velocity parallel to the oblique shock does not, there is no change in that. Uh, so, basically um, the oblique, the changes across an oblique shock changes in the flow properties across an oblique shock are essentially governed by the, uh, the normal component of the velocity change across it. Okay. So, uh, if I redraw this, so if this is my, this is my uh, shock right and say this is my Right. So, okay. So this is v one, and this is uh, v two. Okay. So then, okay. So this is. W1 and similarly we have this on the other side. So, this is Q2 and this is W2. Okay. So, okay. so, this is from geometry and we said that this angle is going to be beta and this angle is theta. Okay? This is the thing. Now, what I'm trying to say here is that there is no change in this component of the velocity, which is that across the normal shock, W1 is equal to W2. This is what we proved from last time. Okay. So, therefore, the changes basically are happening because of the changes in the normal component here, which is u1 and u2. Now, if I were to write the co corresponding Mach number here as m, say, n1 and m n2, 
right. So, the changes basically are due to this velocity component. So, therefore, the change is because of this Mach number. So, if I were to write this uh, the, the, the uh, expressions for all the changes in the properties in this um, with respect to this, uh, mark, this Mach number, then we should be able to use all the normal uh, shock properties or um, you know from the tables. Okay, so let's do that. So if I were to do that, so here, so instead of this, so let us let us just uh, write out these uh, th th these expressions. So instead of this, if I were to write n here, and I've introduced n here n here that will do the trick. So, all I write here is n, all I write here is n, n and so on and so forth, right. So, therefore, these are essentially, so what you can see here that I have written this in terms of, so I have written these, that these uh, relations now are basically valid for an oblique shock, okay. And I write all of these expressions in terms of the uh, normal Mach number over here. Okay. Okay. Now taking from uh, there. Now this is our geometry. Now we can also uh, write like this. Okay. Now M two. So basically, if you look at say this triangle over here. So if I say A, B. And C. So this is say M2, right? The, the Mach number corresponding to this is M2, right? So if I were to write that, so this angle here, beta minus theta, right? So if I use this this triangle, right? So what I get is. right we get this or basically you can write m2 equal to okay so this is an expression for m2 now why is that important because uh, this is the impinging mach number so this is my m1 right this is my m1 and um, uh, this is my m1 and how do I find out m2? Well, we will need to go a slightly roundabout way because this is an oblique shock. Okay? Unlike in the, if this was the impinging Mach number across a normal shock, we would just go look at the tables and find out the corresponding m2. Right? In here though, I can't do that. First of all, I need to find out mn2, which I can do from here. Right? And uh, which I can do from here, and no, because I know M1, and I can find out the normal component. So once I find M N2 from here, so knowing the geometry from here, then I can find out M2. Okay, so this is the corresponding Mach number. Okay, now looking at this, okay, just uh, just if you uh, look at this, just. Just think about this. So basically, this is beta. If you just look at the geometry over here, okay. If you just look at the geometry, so if a, if uh, beta is equal to pi by two, then what do you get? Right. If beta is equal to pi by two, so then then what do you get? Just think about it. And if you also put uh, pi by two over uh, here, then what do we get? Okay just uh, think about it here as well okay okay so now um, uh, so basically i think you can see from here just from the geometry this that if this beta is equal to pi by 2 you actually get a normal shock isn't it then the this the shock is no more inclined it is normal normal to this um, free stream uh, this uh, velocity streamline okay all right. So, having said that, now let us use uh, a couple of things over here. So, mm, okay. So this is my beta. So in that case, if this is my uh, beta, then what do we get? So okay. So this is my beta, right? This is my beta. Okay. 
Okay. So, then this again becomes my um, beta, right. So, if I do this, right, if I do this, so then what I can find, uh, let, let us do some uh, geometry here. Let us call this A, B, C and, okay, so these, let us just name our triangles. So, A, B and C and let us call this, say, um, say D and E, okay. So, if I were to do that, okay, so then what we get is from say this triangle um, A, D, E, right, I am looking at this triangle over here, so then what I get is Right? This is just from the uh, geometry. So, this is just from the uh, geometry. This is tan beta. Okay, need to write this right. Okay, this is so tan beta is equal to u1 by w1. And again, similarly, okay, so now we look at this triangle. So, now we look at this triangle A. B, C. So, we are looking at this uh, triangle over here. So, then what we get is tan, right, tan beta minus theta is equal to u2 by w2. So, u2 by w2, isn't it? Now, like we know that w1 is equal to w2, which is equal to w, say, okay. So, if that is true, then if we can write, in that case we can write, right. So, what we can write is u2 by u1, we can write this as u2 by u1, okay. Now, uh, okay, so I hope you understood what we did over here. So, tan of beta minus theta is this. I just divided, uh, oh basically, so if I write say, this is 1, right. So, all I did here is this, right. So, if I do this, so basically what I get is tan of beta minus theta by tan of beta is u2 by u1 because like we said uh, w1 is equal to w2 right we found that out before now if we come over here you can see we have an expression for u2 by u1 over here in terms of the normal component of the impinging Mach number right so i can actually write that uh, expression i can relate that expression with this so if i do that so so, what I am saying is that this is also now a function of the impinging uh, Mach number, right. And if I do the math, okay, if I do the math, what I will get is this, tan theta is equal to 2 cot beta, okay. Okay. So, what we did over here is that um, this is an, this is what we are trying to do over here is that we are trying to connect the geometry, right, trying to connect the geometry with the Mach number. Now, what is the purpose behind it? Okay. Now, let us try and uh, understand this a little bit. Okay. Now, for example, now what we were saying uh, earlier on in terms of say, Say we have a supersonic flow coming like that, right? Say we have a supersonic flow coming uh, like this, right? 
and it encounters and say it encounters say a more um, you know a, a, an, an obstruction of this nature. So, what we are most probably going to see is right a shock like that a shock like that. So, this is essentially this is essentially the normal part of it and this is a detached bow shock right and this will be a normal shock right this will be a, a, no, a normal shock in this case right. However, let us change the picture a little bit. So, say we have the same uh, and ok. So, this gets compressed and uh, so on and so forth. Now, we have the same thing say over like that ok. So, again we have say supersonic flow over here ok. Now, compared to this structure over here right, this is more of a bluff kind of a body right. So, if I have something like this instead if I have say something like this if I say I have something like this right, then what is the kind of structure that we are going to see right. What is the kind of structure that we are going to see? Are we going to encounter this set of a shock or what is it going that is going to happen right. So, what will happen here is that we are going to get we are going to encounter basically an attached oblique shock right. So, what we are essentially trying to calculate over here is that this is say my m 1 and this is my m 2 right and in here in here right that this is an angle which I am calling as beta and this is an angle I am calling as theta ok. So, essentially if my shape of the body changes then this is the kind of structure that we are going to see ok. Now, the next question to ask is that ok. Now, what governs this beta right or what governs this theta. So, clearly what we see from here is that whether it will be an oblique shock or a normal shock there is some connection with the geometry over here right. There is some connection with this geometry. Now, if say if we have say you know this sort of a uh, you know th th this is the kind of say wedge we get say we, we have a wedge like this or a corner like this sharp corner like this right. So, we are encountering this right. Now, instead of this what if we have something like this ok. Let us uh, let us say instead of this say what if we have say something like this. In that case how will this how will the geometry of this oblique shock change or will it change or will it not change ok. Now, clearly there is some connection of the geometry of the shock with the geometry of the body right. So, therefore, if I have say a shock like this you know or say I have a shock um, say like this right. So, if I have say so what I have drawn here is basically say three cases right. So, in these three cases how is the geometry of the shock going to change or is it going to change right. Now, based on that so, uh, based on that what we see over here that the theta right which is the angle with which the uh, Mach number behind the shock is deflected right because of the oblique shock. Now, beta is the angle be beta is the angle of the oblique shock ok and m 1 is the impinging Mach number ok. So, therefore, what we see is that these are connected. So, the geometry of the shock is connected with the impinging Mach number 
right? So this is the connection and, um, and so therefore if we do change the theta over here there will be a corresponding change in beta or having said that for a given theta and a given m1 beta is going to be a particular value a particular value or more than one value right could it be more than one value for a particular for a given case of theta and m1 let's see from here so for a given case of say a theta right and m1 if you look at these equations we will actually have two values of beta okay so all right so now this is an e expression therefore right again so it gives us a connection between the geometry of the shock uh, with the uh, impinging Mach number right and this is uh, the this is the more very common theta beta m relationship uh, which is associated with you know uh, shocks with oblique shocks right and uh, this again is given in uh, is available in charts in your in, in, in any you know normal uh, any uh, regular textbook right this will be avail available from there and you should be able to uh, you know get your values very easily from uh, from there okay so now, um, so let us just sort of uh, look at this uh, a little bit. Okay. Now the question is, like we like we said, that how are we exactly relating this uh, geometry? So let us just look at that in say a uh, little more, uh, um, little more in 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 uh, detail. Okay. So if say beta is given and an m one is is given, now there is a corresponding maximum theta that this can attain right there is a corresponding maximum theta which means that for a given Mach number and beta there is a corresponding theta max okay there is a corresponding theta uh, max now what does this mean what does this exactly mean uh, when I when I say this let us take a look at that Okay, let us sort of detail this out. Now, for example, so the now the, the point is now the point is that every time we have a wedge, should we have a uh, attached uh, oblique shock, or what? Okay, what do we what do we uh, encounter? So. So, say this is the wedge. Oh, okay. Okay. So, essentially, this is my theta, right? When you com compare, so this is the geometry of the body. So, this is the theta, okay? And uh, we have. Impinging mark number, uh, impinging mark over here, and let us look at this case as well. This is this is also the theta, and we have the same, and I have the similar. Okay, so like uh, if you look at this expression over here, now for a given say, um, uh, for a given uh, Mach number and say a given beta. Okay, now let's uh, basically just look at the math part of it over here. So for a given Mach number and a M1 and beta, there is a there is a corresponding theta max. Okay, now. What does this mean uh, physically? Now, as you can see here, and like we were asking over here, so that if I change this theta, right? If I change this theta, what happens to the geometry of the shock over here? Now, what we can see from here is that in here. So, for both these cases, okay, there for for this given Mach number and for a given beta, there is a corresponding theta max. Okay. There is a corresponding theta max. Now let us consider these uh, two cases over here. Okay. So 
Now, this theta here, this theta of the body, okay, is greater than the theta max, okay, and this theta here is less than the theta max. What happens in either of these cases? What does that mean? What kind of a shock, or how is the geometry of the shock going to be defined? Okay, so what we have in this case actually, in this case, that we are going to have essentially we will have an attached oblique shock right in this case what we have is an attached oblique shock right and what happens in this case so their theta is less than theta max okay now just think about this so in this case we have an attached oblique shock okay so now this theta is increased okay this theta is increased and so therefore there will be changes in the geometry of the uh, oblique shock as well as we increase that theta furthermore and this theta then becomes larger than theta max in this case what happens in this case what will happen is this of course this is exaggerated so just to try to make the point so in this case what we will see is a detached bow shock Okay. So, in this case when the theta is greater than the theta max, what we will see is a detached bow shock. Okay. So, from this what I can sort of see for myself and I hope you can, you can infer the same is that I have a smaller theta. Okay, and depending on the Mach number, we will have an oblique shock which is attached to the body, right. You start increasing this theta, right, you start increasing this theta, this angle beta also, also will, will probably, this is my beta, right. So, this body kind of tries to move, move away the shock from itself, right. The more and more you increase it, this shock the the angle the beta the angle with the oblique shock makes also increases and finally when the theta is large enough larger than the maximum value of the theta then it actually pushes away the shock further from itself so it detaches itself and lands up out here okay so then it, this becomes a detached bow shock okay so um, this is for say uh, wedges okay now we could get a similar picture say for uh, if say if i have a, a, a corner okay if i encounter if the same flow it encounters a corner so uh, this is you know typical uh, wedge structure so if i have say this is by m1 so uh, what we could have is a structure like this okay so basically I have a right so I have a sharp corner like this if I have a sharp corner like this and I will pretty much get the same uh, you know if I have uh, something uh, like this okay so if I have a theta say greater than uh, theta max so in this case what we will have is a detached shock in front like that okay this and similarly over here if I have another uh, corner like this okay let's get that right okay so Okay, so if I have this right theta, you have less than uh, theta max. So then this is the this is M one. So in this case, K 
okay that will be my attached uh, attached shock so in this case also we'll have an attached uh, shock structure and in this case we'll have a uh, detached uh, bow shock so this is for basically mm, uh, corners right wedges and corners so so that is essentially the physical meaning what we take away from here okay so this is the connection between the Mach number and the geometry of the body and the uh, geometry of the shock hence generated. Okay. Now, again now coming back to this relationship again you can see okay, um, make no mistake. So, this is cos 2 beta, okay. this is cos 2 beta. Okay. So, if you look here, so basically for a given theta and m 1 there are two values of the beta. Right. What does that mean? That for a given Mach number like this, right, and for the given geometry, there are two possibilities of this beta, right. There can be beta 1 and beta 2, right, two possibilities in which this uh, shock is going to be generated, okay. So, now let us introduce, let us in introduce the beta, right, which is the shock wave angle into this equation and see what we get. See if we can infer some things more from this relationship. So, this is the change in density across the um, oblique shock, right. So, if I were to change that, so what I would get from here is this. right I get that and then again P 2 by P 1 what I get again is ok. I hope you can see how we are introducing M 1 here instead of the normal component ok. I think uh, hopefully you can you can you can see that uh, from uh, here, right? I think we did that uh, somewhere over here. Yeah. So if you if you look at uh, look at this uh, triangle here, A, D, and E. So all I'm trying to do is connect M N one, and uh, this is M one. Okay. This is M one. Okay. So, if you take, so if you take this triangle, so then sin beta, so essentially if you take that triangle, so here, okay, just to clarify this. So, if you take triangle A, D and E, so you get say sin beta is m n 1 by m 1, right. So, m 1 so, m n 1 is essentially m 1 sin beta that is all I have done over here ok that is all I have done. Uh, so, this is what we uh, get from the expression over here right. Now, so what I said over here is that now so this is the relationship of so what we are trying to do over here again is connect the change in geometries uh, the change in the flow properties with the geometry of the shock. Right? Because what we are seeing over here is that if for a given Mach number, right, if for a given Mach number, if I change the geometry of the body, the geometry of the shock also changes, right. So, beta also changes. So, the question is, is that important? Does that affect the change of my properties? It is ok, it is all right if uh, you know this beta is smaller or this beta is, is larger as long as my properties are not affected the chain the properties are not, not affected by the geometry or by the size of beta I am fine right. What we see however, that that is uh, that may not be true right. So, what we are trying to do over here is see if that will actually make any change. So, what we did is that the change in properties over here which is rho 2 by rho 1 we wrote that in terms of uh, the Mach number which of course, is a defining parameter and the uh, shock wave angle which is beta and we did the same thing with the uh, 
pressure. So, this is what we it looks like. Now, if you look over here, so therefore, now if you look at this uh, re relationship, okay, now if we increase beta, what happens to rho 2 by rho 1? If we increase beta, and again, if we increase beta over here, what happens to p2 by p1? I think the best way to understand this is to actually put values of beta in there and probably in, and then, then, then get a uh, expression for this. So, what we will do is we will do a couple of problems and see if we understand that. Okay? So, uh, we will do that, okay? we will do that in a bit, but just to think about it. So, if you increase beta over here, what happens to rho 2 by rho 1? If we increase beta over here, what happens to p 2 over p 1? And what does that tell us about the nature of the shock? In the sense that is the sh shock becoming stronger? Right? Or is the shock be becoming uh, weaker if we increase the uh, shock wave angle? Right? And the shock wave angle we can increase or decrease by a change in uh, m1 and uh, the geometry of the body. Okay? So, um, I think what we shall uh, sort of do is uh, do a problem and then go, go ahead and see uh, how how this we, we can relate this okay all right so to do that let, let us sort of look at this okay okay so we have a uniform supersonic uh, 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 stream uh, and the given values are m1 P 1 is 1 atmospheres, T 1 is 288 Kelvin and this encounters a corner, right? Um, this encounters a corner, something li like that. So, basically uh, it is encountering, and so, okay, and you know, a, an oblique shock happens, okay. So, uh, right, and that deflects that deflects it. So basically what happens is that physically, so you have a flow like that, okay? So you have a flow like this. Right? And physically then you have a corner over here. Basically, we have a corner over here, and uh, this is a incoming uh, free. Uh, this is an incoming uh, flow of flow, and it has these properties. When it encounters a corner like that, it is basically deflected. Okay, it is basically deflected by twenty degrees. Okay, it is basically deflected by 20 degrees. Okay, so what we are basically uh, so and at, then this is deflected, right, by 20 degrees. So this is a supersonic flow which is impinging. So now what we are basically seeing is that there is actually a shock wave, isn't it? So um, I think I should draw this right. Okay, so let's say so. Therefore, this is. Okay, so say it is deflected by twenty degrees. Okay, and so essentially, I can say that there is an attached shock over here. Here. Right? You could also uh, draw this in this way that you basically have, you know, a shock. Th this is a field, and this it's deflecting it in such a way that this is 20 degrees. Okay? So this is essentially the geometry. So it, it encounters. So I have a flow like this. Encounters the corner. It deflects it by 20 degrees. So first things first, you know, what we need to find out is k 
calculate so calculate the shock wave angle okay which is beta calculate beta and then uh, let us calculate p2 t2 m2 the stagnations behind the shock right so behind the shock we need to calculate all of this can we do that okay so now um, what we shall do now is uh, to find out okay so we to find out the corresponding beta right now we have seen this relationship theta beta m so we know the theta right the theta is 20 degrees m1 is 3 so from this expression we should be able to find out the beta right now this is something we can get from the charts which is again available so if i use that okay if i use that so what i will get is this in here so beta is equal to if you look at that so beta is equal to 37.5 uh, degrees okay so this is it now again so now what is m n 1 now now how do we calculate these all we need to do is like we have seen before all of these things we can use the normal shock tables provided we know what m n 1 is okay so uh, we'll have to we, we can find these ratios with respect to m n 1 and not m 1 so now that we know m 1 we know beta we know theta then how do we calculate m n 1 right so now m n 1 so therefore m n 1 is right m 1 uh, sine beta right and that is equal to 1.826 so m n 1 okay now corresponding to m this m n 1 from the uh, uh, charts of the tables what we will get is from the now we will go back to the normal shock tables right if i do that then p2 by p1 is 3.723 this is what i uh, got t2 by t1 is one point say that and m n2 right so this is the m2 for normal shock which is m n2 over here is equal to zero point six one oh eight okay and we also get p okay let me write it better okay so write this also i get at point eight zero one one now all you need to do is basically once you've calculated m n one which is this so just corresponding to that we will get all these values from the normal shock tables you just, just just go look it up and then this is all that we get now having known these uh, ratios now i believe you can find out all these values because p1 t1 are all known so therefore we can calculate p1 is known so we can calculate p2 from here then t1 is known we can calculate t2 from here and what else do we need to calculate? So M2, so we can calculate M2 because we know MN2, right? And uh, P02 and T01. Okay, so if I do that, so let me just sort of Okay, so if I do that, well, uh, let me just write what I get. So P2 is essentially uh, 3.723, right? Atmospheres, then what we get for T2 is 446 point seven Kelvin. Then M2, how do we get? MN2 sine of now it is just math okay so we know beta which is the deflection angle 
and theta is given, theta is 20 degrees. So, uh, and this we basically, if you look at the geometry, the way we design it, if you look at the triangle ABC, I think, then you will get this. Okay. So, then uh, what you get here is this. Okay. Now, so again, what the um, no, stagnation conditions. Now, how do we find out P naught 2 and P uh, T naught 2? Okay. Now, corresponding to this M 1, okay, corresponding to this M 1 for say M 1 equal to 3, we get values for P by P naught. This is also from the charts. We get P by P naught to be equal to 0 0.027 write that. So, therefore, from here I can calculate say P naught 1 by P 1, right. So, P naught 1 by P 1 which is 36.74, okay. So, corresponding to this M 1 what we get is uh, the uh, stagnation conditions like that. This is also from the chart from the tables. So, then uh, P naught 1 by P 1 is this. So, you can see that P 1 is something that that is known to us. What we need, however, is P naught 2 by P naught 1. Okay? So, uh, this is it. So, similarly, we will also get uh, results. So, again, we will again get uh, for, okay, let us write it over here. So, similarly, again, for M 1 equal to 3, we get T by T naught um, as Right. So, therefore, okay. So, T naught 1 by uh, T, T 1 is basically 2.8. Okay. So, if I do that, then the way will, how do we calculate P naught uh, 2, right. So, we need to calculate, uh, okay. So, what we need to calculate P naught 2 and T naught 2. Okay. So, the way we get P naught 2 uh, is, if we, we will just be a little clever and use this. Right. So, this is something that we were able to find out corresponding to, uh, yes, yeah, so we were able to calculate this with respect to uh, M N 1, right. So, we were able to find this out and then uh, using corresponding to M 1, we were able to find uh, these, right. So, these are the stagnation conditions. So, then we get P naught 2 in, in this fashion, it is just working with this. So, what we get over here is if you just use those values and then what we get over here is again this is again just playing around. So, T naught 2, T naught 1, right. So, this is just uh, using, right and what we get here is 806.4 Kelvin, right. So, this is what we get and um, so, right. So, then this is, you know, this is uh, what we get. So, okay, let, let us uh, sort of uh, stop here. So, we will do a little more with this problem and uh, try and uh, again address uh, a little more in terms of what kind of a shock we get. Is it a strong shock or a weak shock? How do we decide that? Okay, depending on your Mach number, uh, depending on the geometry of the body. Okay. So, let us do that uh, you know slightly more with this problem and we will discuss it in a little more detail. Okay. We will stop here. Thanks. <laughs>